A campaign is underway to get more homeless people in Wolverhampton registered to vote. One of the city's marginal constituencies has been targeted by a group of online activists. They've set up a website where people can find out how to get onto the electoral roll using a local charity's address. Neil Amerson is from the outreach charity in Wolverhampton. You do need an address. The Good Shepherd Ministry provide a soup kitchen service as well as advice and clothing and things like that to support people. And it also provides a postal address. And as many of the people we see on the streets who go there, it counts as um, an address they can use to register to vote with. Alex Lester at breakfast on BBC WM 95.6. Radio for the West Midlands. So with a general election just around the corner on June the 8th, many of us are expecting yet another polling card to drop through our letterbox. But what about the homeless? Are they still able to have a say? The answer to that is yes. People living on the streets or without a home can still vote. No, I wasn't aware that I actually could. Um, would you consider voting? Uh, probably, if I uh, knew more about the, the elections and things like that and the policies. I think the government has not made it easy for people on the streets for anything, to be honest, let alone voting. And we find it hard to access all sorts of all sorts of things, to be honest. Is it something you would consider doing in the future? Do you feel like it would make a difference? I'm sure it would make a difference, and, yeah, I'd certainly consider it, knowing more that I know that I can actually do it now. Did you know that you have access to vote? Yep, I did, yeah. And do you know the, the ways of going about it? Yep. And do you exercise your right to vote? No. I don't care about me, so I don't care about them. Do you feel like the government has made it difficult for people on the streets to vote? I don't think anybody cares who lives on the street, whether they can vote or not. So, given you could go into like local council houses, get packages to register your vote, will you be doing that? No, I won't be doing it. I've always tried to vote when I can. Yeah. Um, but it's just made really difficult for me, you know, because I've been moving from place to place. It's just all up in the air, and you know, I take an interest. You know, I look about what's going on, and it just—I never seem to get the chance to vote. Do you know what I mean? There's lots of people I know would vote. BBC WM's Matt Mitchell speaking to homeless people in Birmingham. And in Wolverhampton, there's a new project to try and encourage those on the streets to vote. More on the activists group after 8 o'clock this morning. Neil Amerson is from Outreach Wolverhampton and explains about their rights. It doesn't seem widely known that they still have their full eligibility to register. You do need an address. And as a, an organisation within Wolverhampton, the Good Shepherd Ministry, they provide a soup kitchen service as well as advice and clothing and things like that to support people. And it also provides a postal address. And as many of the people we see on the streets do go there and spend quite a bit of time uh, talking to people there, it, uh, it counts as an address they can use to register to vote with. We will be going there to encourage people and to the staff at the soup kitchen hopefully will also do the same and other organisations as well. Part of the new project is focusing on marginal seats, so where the incumbent MP has a small majority. One of those is Wolverhampton South West. The prospective Conservative candidate for that seat is Paul Upple. Good morning to you, Paul. Good morning, Alex. What do you think of this push to get more homeless people voting, then? Well, I think, obviously, one of the important points is that people who are homeless can feel disconnected from society, but I think there's a broader picture here. We've still got issues with um, the general population voting as well. You know, turnout has gone down on elections. Obviously, we had a bigger vote with Brexit last year. It sort of animated everybody. But I think the broader thing I would say, it's about how, uh, in terms of government and in terms of working with local authorities, we can actually get more people um, who, from a homeless situation into accommodation. I right, think. let's actually just concentrate on this, if we can, this whole thing about, actually, we're just going to talk about homeless people voting. Okay. okay. So how do you think they can make a difference in Wolverhampton South West? It is a marginal. It's about, obviously, them connecting and then feeling as though they can actually vote and feel as though they're part of society and connected. So the Good Shepherd um, uh, Ministry, which you mentioned there, which does food banks, I, I've actually spent a day there and seen some of the work that they do. And anything, any process that can help people feel engaged with the election and feel that it can actually change their lives can be a good thing. Now, you're the prospective Conservative candidate for the seat. Uh, if you get more people, homeless people, voting, are they? do you think they're... Conservative voters, do you think they're part of your constituency, if you like? Look, Alex, I, I, I'll tell you one thing I've learned in my life. You can't <laughs> judge voters or stereotype them. What you can do as a Member of Parliament or as a prospective candidate is do the best for your constituents. And I would just 
broadening out slightly, it's not just churches who provide uh, voluntary services. I'm a, a trustee of a Sikh temple, and two to three times weekly, they do also provide food for homeless people and provide support as well. So I think as long as people can see that you're doing a decent job and doing your best, then you can connect with voters, whether they're homeless or whether they're accommodated. So in a nutshell, Paul, you just want as many people as possible to vote, no matter what their background. Well, whatever their background, I want them to feel as though they're connected and part of the process and they should activate their vote. I mean, look, people have given their lives so that we can vote in this country. I don't think we should take it lightly. And anybody who can, I think they should exercise that opportunity at the first chance they get. Paul Apple, thank you very much indeed. And Rob Morris, the current Labour MP, is standing down at the next general election. With a general election just around the corner on the 8th of June, many of us are expecting yet another a polling card to drop through our little box. I was saying just a few moments ago, this whole thing, oh, right, you know, is it another election? Oh, and uh, what about the homeless, though? Are they still able to have a say? Well, um, the answer to that actually is yes. People living on the streets or without a home can still vote. No, I wasn't aware that I actually could. Um, would you consider voting? Uh, probably, if I... Uh know more about the, the elections and things like that and the policies. I think the government have not made it easy for people on the streets for anything, to be honest, let alone voting. And we find it hard to access all sorts of all sorts of things, to be honest. Is it something you would consider doing in the future? Do you feel like it would make a difference? I'm sure it would make a difference and, yeah, I'd certainly consider it knowing more that I know that I can actually do it now. Did you know that you have access to vote? Yep, I did, yeah. And do you know the, the ways of going about it? Yep. And do you exercise your right to vote? No. I don't care about me, I don't care about them. Do you feel like the government has made it difficult for people on the streets to vote? I don't think anybody cares who lives on the street, whether they can vote or not. So, given you could go into like local council houses, get packages to register your vote, will you be doing that? No, I won't be doing it. I've always tried to vote when I can. Yeah. Um, but it's just made really difficult for me, you know, because I've been moving from place to place. It's just all up in the air, and you know, I take an interest. You know, I look about what's going on, and it just—I never seem to get the chance to vote. Do you know what I mean? There's lots of people I know would vote. BBC WM's Matt Mitchell speaking to homeless people in Birmingham. Now, a group of online activists called Aptivists are trying to spread the word. They're focusing on helping homeless people in 30 marginal constituencies, including one in Wolverhampton, by providing online resources to get people without a home address registered. Tom Smith is the co-founder of the group called Aptivists. Good morning to you, Tom. Good morning. Now, are people surprised to find out that homeless people can vote? Um, yes, as was I a few months ago, really, when I first came across the uh, the concept. Um, it's something I've never really had to think about. But, um, yeah, it, people are very, very surprised quite often. Why is it more difficult, then, for homeless people to register? Well, everyone else can register online, even people who no longer live in the country, the expats. They're given a helping hand by the government to register online. Um, but homeless people have to fill in an extra form, which is the local connection form. And they can only get that by printing that off from online and then hand posting it in the register. So it's, it's an extra barrier for homeless people who probably don't even have a printer anyway. Now, have you had a background of homelessness, Tom? Because I just wonder why uh, you decided to get involved in this. No, I don't have a background of homelessness. I'm very, very fortunate. I mean, activists were a group of academics, doctors, activists, um, who believe there should be a much greater equality in this world. And it's, it's, it's more about humanity. Everyone in this society at the moment must see the homeless issue that we have on the streets. Um, whether you're walking down Brighton or through Wolverhampton. Um, and to just turn a blind eye is not possible. And if you've got the privilege, then you should do something about the, the inequality in this country. Now, you, so, that, so therefore, this is, is this a political organisation, really? No, not at all, not at all. Um, we are purely non-partisan. This is purely about empowering homeless people to vote. It's more about humanity than politics. Why are you... So being kind... What, well, I just wonder why, in that case, you're, you're targeting marginal constituencies then with uh, helping homeless people. There are homeless people all over the place, unfortunately, aren't there? There are indeed. And we, will, we, we have general advice there as well. Um, the unfortunate thing is we are a small organisation at the moment that are trying to raise awareness. And with a snap election, we haven't been given much time to organise anything greater. Um, it takes a lot of work to get this kind of information together and, and put it out there. So... Being pragmatic, the 30 marginal constituencies are the places where homeless people can have their voices heard the most. It's where they have more power. We have a strange situation where, in, in our electoral system where a vote in Wolverhampton South West is worth more 
than a vote in a safe constituency with a 10,000 majority. Because that's where the current Labour MP, Rob Maris, uh, who is actually standing down, uh, you had a majority of just 801, so therefore that looked like an ideal exactly. target for you. Yes, yes, so it's about empowering people in that area, saying, look, you, you can vote. Um, the government might be making it hard for you to register, but we're here to try and make the process as, as easy as possible. Um, give you places, if you do not have a, an address that yourself that you can use, you can go to you. So, for example, in Wolverhampton South West, it's Good Shepherd Ministry. Um, anyone can use their address, for example. What would success um, for your project look like then? Increased numbers of voter registration. It's as simple as that. Um, we don't have concrete figures of nationally um, who, who is registered to vote when they don't have any address. We're guessing or we have some information, say it's roughly around about 600 probably out of the over 400,000 people with no fixed address in this country. So even doubling that number would be an amazing achievement and would show the government that actually there needs to be a quality for people who are homeless or have no fixed address and they need to be able to register to vote simply online just like everyone else can. Now the thing is if you're homeless you're very much cut off aren't you from society so do you think or do you find that homeless people are in possession of all the facts uh, when it comes to you know wanting to to vote register to vote and then who to vote for? No, um, indeed, they're not in possession of all the facts. Um, it can be very hard to get information when you're on the street. Your best port of call is generally the local library, which are, are generally very good um, for, you know, for people to be able to get online, find information out. But it's not as easy as for everyone else that has a permanent internet connection, um, a smartphone that's always got charge and credit. Um, so it's, yeah, it is very, very difficult. But just because they don't have access to the information everyone else gets doesn't mean they shouldn't be able to exercise their right to vote. It's just that you, you, you say you're not uh, party political, but I just uh, wondered yeah. whether or not, you know, that uh, the, again, as I was told by the, the, the Conservative prospective parliamentary candidate uh, for Wolverhampton Southwest in the first hour of the programme, that uh, obviously I, it was a broad stereotype, but I just wonder, with a marginal constituency like that, with a majority of just 801, uh, the fact is that um, possibly uh, homeless people registered to vote are more likely to vote Labour than they are Conservative. Or they're more likely to vote UKIP, or they're more likely to vote Lib Dem. That's not our concern. Um, we're not, we don't really want to talk about party politics or anything along those lines. It's purely about trying to empower homeless people as best as we can in the short time scale we've been given. Tom Smith, thank you very much indeed. Tom Smith, co-founder of a group called Aptivists. So I'm sure uh, we'll have more on that uh, as the story develops. It's absolutely fascinating. There's so much going on and it's just, you know, it's not as straightforward to just, to just go out, you know, you, the ballot uh, paper may have dropped on the mat or whatever, go out and vote, etc. It's a lot more difficult uh, if you're homeless, but it is actually possible, uh, which is uh, certainly interesting to hear.